So let's take another look at the downward trend of the combat patrols in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Perhaps particularly given Games Workshop's release schedule, they might soon be coming for the best too. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Warhammer 40k and discount boxes once more. In this video I wanted to take another look at the combat patrols, with Games Workshop seemingly trying to make all of them a little bit worse by the numbers for every single one so far. Earlier in the edition I did touch on that subject, before Christmas I made a video talking about Games Workshop possibly making combat patrols worse for the ones that we have updated. I thought it could be interesting to check in as to how that's going talking through the five updated combat patrols that we've got so far, and then taking a look at the ones for the upcoming codexes, as there's at least a couple that a Games Workshop did design to redesign them, I can't help but think that they're not going to be quite as generous. So far it does look like we've got an 100% track record of Games Workshop updating each combat patrol box in turn, so unless they decide to abandon that for any of the next ones that they come out with, I think that the logical assumption is that they will change things around for every single faction in the game, meaning that you've probably got until the faction's codex updates to pick that box up if you wanted it. Going through the ones that we've had so far briefly, first up we had Space Marines and Tyranids for the launch of the edition. From my point of view, I was pretty surprised how low the model count on the Space Marine box set was. Just in terms of raw weight of models in the box, it does feel like perhaps the very weakest out of any of the combat patrols out there. Even if it does have the fun new Terminator models, it still overall feels like you've basically got one less unit than virtually every other combat patrol in the game. The Tyranids one, I think, objectively is kind of fine. There are monopose sculpts, which might give you some irritation with Termagant war gear. But you get a good cluster of swarms, elite infantry, a character, and a small monster. I feel like that one will probably look like an alright deal in 11th edition, but unfortunately, as I've talked about many times on the channel, they're both kind of bad, as they're just directly worse than getting the standard 40k starter box set, plus either the Terminator Librarian or the Barb Gaunts to give you the full box set. In previous editions, we had Combat Patrol box sets that were a bit of a counterpart to the overall start collecting boxes of the edition. The Necrons and the Space Marines had their Indomitus style offerings, but then also different combat patrol sets that were completely different to those. Unfortunately in 10th edition that's not the case for the Tyranids, though admittedly the Space Marines have got lots to fall back on on all their chapter specific combat patrols. As ever though for the actual combat patrol box sets, these guys being re directly redundant, it's hard to see as an actual win for the combat patrol box sets, more the starter sets. In reality, I thought that the other three were maybe the ones that we can really judge a bit better by, by what Games Workshop's aiming for the combat patrols. First up, we had the Necrons, whose box on the left went out of production shortly before 10th, and then it was replaced by some Indomitus Necrons plus the Doomstalker. Generally, I think that most people would agree that the kits are quite fun. The Doomstalker is quite a popular one with its big Doomsday Blaster, and the rest all feel like fairly core units, but in terms of both price and the amount of Points that you could expect to fail it out of it, both of these have taken big hits since the one with the older kits. The new Necron Combat Patrol has got one of the lower discounts out of any of the Combat Patrols out there, and is kind of significantly less for points in game, presuming you built the Flyer as the more expensive Doom Scythe and not the cheap Knight Scythe though. I'm sure there's still plenty of people that might prefer the model collection on the right to the one on the left, but for a discount box it does seem like it offers a little bit less. At the same time as the Necrons, we also had the Admech, moving from this one on the left with the Honored of Dune Crawler and the Cataphron Servitors to the one on the right, focusing on the Taraxi and Cerberus. The price of the kits included was kind of similar, but still a little bit less than the previous one. But perhaps the thing that really makes the one on the right feel a bit more anemic is the points and threat that the units have in game. It's only 270 points worth of models versus the 420 for the one on the left. Big chunky tanks and servitors with big guns generally have a bit more value than the skirmish troops of the right one. Again, while the actual miniatures I think are really quite I do like the Cerberus models in particular. It seems that per savings and for actually getting points on the board, the Admeg also took a loss. Finally, for the Dark Angels, we have the Redemptor box set with the Inceptors, Intercessors and Chaplain versus the new bigger squad of Intercessors. 5 Hellblasters, 3 Blade Guard, and a Gravis Captain. And this one I feel like perhaps lost out the least. Both the numbers really are quite close to each other, 
only taking a small hit in terms of the price of the kits included and the points in-game. And the in-game points would have been very even indeed prior to the latest set of Space Marine points increases. It's kind of notable though that quite a lot of the actual money cost of both of these Dark Angels combat patrols come from their upgrade sprues. And if you're not particularly interested in them, then they're both kind of low discount boxes compared with the rest of the field. So arguably this was one of the ones that wasn't starting with a place of a big discount to start with. So there wasn't really much further down to go lower. Maybe meaning that they took a bit less of a hit than some. I still say this new one's on the right is useful enough though. Maybe it's a bit more of a core standard Space Marine starting box set compared with others. It just doesn't feel enormously Dark Angels given no unique units. And the Gravis Captain is a bit of a weird choice given that he can't join any of the units here. Obviously at this point we don't know how Games Workshop's planning to update every single Combat Patrol for 10th edition. Though so far the track record hasn't been great. The first two were kind of redundant for the Space Marines and Tyranids when they didn't really need to be. They could have given those factions a different generic combat patrol to what you get in the starter box sets. Or for all of the rest of them it looks like they've got both lower discount and also fewer points in game. It's basically 6 out of 6 on those stats out of the remaining 3. So you could definitely do some debate as to the overall desirability of the models and how much you might like them. I feel like perhaps my first guess for an explanation as to why this is happening besides Games Workshop perhaps wanting to rein in discounts a little bit is the actual existence of the Combat Patrol game mode itself. One of Games Workshop's big ideas for 10th edition pitting box set against box set for an easy way to jump into the game. It seems that for trying to make that game a bit more playable they might be deciding to try and take out the very big heavy vehicles out of the Combat Patrol boxes. That does seem to be a running theme for the Necrons, Admech and Dark Angels, all of those had a big chunky hefty vehicle. It was either a flyer or an equivalent to a walking battle tank, all of those are gone and either replaced by kind of lighter vehicles, the infantry can damage a bit better or just more lighter infantry. The reasoning for that would be that big models that only some things can damage can just be kind of swingy when you have very small games like this. Some combat patrols out there might just not be able to have any real answer to those really big tanky things, perhaps the Dark Angels Redemptor Dreadnought in particular. Even if they do try and patch things a little bit by giving access to things like anti-monster and anti-vehicle type stratagems, I feel like by removing these big chunky centipede style kits from the combat patrols, that might be one of the reasons why you're getting less points in the box sets at least. At least for several things in 40k, lighter vehicles and lighter infantry might often just have less points per the money compared with big tanky vehicles and things like that. So maybe that's one reason that a few of these are getting a bit worse. In any case though, so far all the combat patrols have been updated and so far all of them have got a bit worse by the points and the discounts. And I can't help but think that that's going to have people questioning what comes next. Within 10th edition every army will get a codex so that would imply a different combat patrol for each army in the game unless they show that they're doing anything different. And next on the combat patrol redesigned chopping block that would have Tau Empire Orcs, Chaos Marines and Adeptus Custodes in spring and then for summer it will be Gene Steeler Colts and Adeptus Auroritus plus the mystery codex if that happens to be a current existent one as opposed to a new faction like Emperor's Children or something. Besides the ones that have already been released, this section of armies, particularly the spring ones, encompass some of the most popular factions in Warhammer 40k. And including the summer ones, it does include the two best combat patrol box sets, at least in my humble opinion. The first of those that I'd really rate as quite high is perhaps unsurprisingly Combat Patrol Adeptus Custodes. This was the one that I ranked first in a Race of the Combat Patrols video that I did kind of recently. In this one you get 5 Custodian Guard, 3 Virtus Praetor Jet Bags, and then 10 Sisters of Silence. An overall discount of 35%, which is maybe slightly on the upper end of Combat Patrols after Games Workshop's been redoing them. And it gets you a pretty whopping 660 points in the box. That's just assuming that you're building one Shield Captain from the box set. You could go even heavier on the characters if you wanted. Overall this must certainly be one of Games Workshop's most popular Combat Patrols. Loads of points in game, nice recent sculpts, and an army that's pretty good in game at least right now. It does mean that it's generally considered more tempting than most. If Games Workshop does decide to redesign this one, my guess is that perhaps one of the squads that we have here might well be replaced by a character model. I feel like given the actual lack of unique characters for the custodies, there might be at least some chance that the blade champion could be that. 
unless that new custody with a Melter Spear happens to be a character miniature as well. My guess is that Games Workshop might try and redesign this so it can actually play in the Combat Patrol game mode. Currently, if you do want to play in that game mode, you have to choose to either take the Custodian Guard or the Bikers along. You can't take both. I feel like if Games Workshop really is trying to make all of these work for that same game mode, then they're going to have to try and reduce the amount of points in the box by quite a bit. Unless they do go with a similar sort of solution of just having two units and only being able to take one. I kind of hope they don't. It feels like quite a good box set in particular for picking up Sisters of Silence means that a bunch of supporting units aren't too hard to come by as they'd be quite expensive per model out of this. Otherwise, the other one that I really rate as one of the standout best combat patrols of Warhammer 40k is Combat Patrol Gene Stealer Cults. In this one you get a Magus, 20 Neophytes, 5 Acolytes, 5 Aberrants, and a Goliath Truck or Rock Grinder. This one's perhaps just weirdly generous, getting you maybe one more unit than you normally expect out of any normal combat patrols, and again is right on the upper end of the points numbers, since the Gene Stealer Colts went up to pay for their Colt ambush a bit more, they're now 655 points. Certainly one of the higher value ones here, and kind of surprising for an army that was a bit notoriously hoardy and notoriously expensive in the past. Again this one feels like a very easy purchase if you're wanting to get into a Gene Stealer Colt army. Most of the kits are represented here, and you could literally get two or even three copies of the same kit. The only model that you'd have as being truly redundant would be that Magus, who you could potentially convert into other characters perhaps. I think for the reason that it does seem so generous though, I can't help but think that if someone did decide to just redesign a Gene Stiller Colt Combat Patrol, it's probably going to be less good. I really wouldn't be surprised to see something somewhat similar, but with just one less unit. It could swap characters around, or the Rock Grinder for a Ridge Runner. But I basically feel like it's so well made at the moment that almost anything that you did change about it, you'd almost certainly make it worse. Obviously, if there's any chance of them keeping things the same, I think that this one would be a really nice one to keep for Gene Stealer Colt Collectors. It literally is the box set that makes the difference between them being a very, very expensive faction and an actually somewhat affordable faction. As mentioned, you really could get a long way just by getting three copies of this and having the best part of a 2,000 point army then and there. Overall, I feel like perhaps the two mentioned before are the ones that have the highest chance of getting directly worse when they're updated. Besides that though, there are quite a few that's coming up for possible renewal. I feel like the Orcs one is kind of nice, though it does have some oddities, like the Mega Armored War Boss that can't join the regular boys. Plus the new boys kit was maybe a bit disappointing and you don't have the flexibility to give everyone either shooters or choppers. The Sisters of Battle one, I would be kind of surprised if they did anything too different with this one given that most of those are monoposed sculpts from a previous box set. I'd be kind of surprised if they tried to get away with just, say, removing the Rhino and then just re-releasing the same things. I feel like that would be just a bit too obviously a downgrade. Otherwise, for the Chaos Space Marines, I feel like their one has at least some fairly central kits to the army range, that they could definitely go down different ways if they wanted with it. And the Tau one's interesting enough, though it's certainly Tau of a certain flavour, going very heavy with their stealth battle suits which perhaps doesn't feel quite as mainstream as some maybe. Fingers crossed it isn't just all one way with these combat patrol updates, there might well be some that genuinely get better or more interesting, as well as ones that seem to be worse deals than before, but I guess we'll have to wait and see on that front. In any case, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that when their codexes are released, the combat patrols for Adeptus Custodes or Gene Stealer Colts are going to be getting worse or not? Look forward to any insights down in the comments. As ever, if you were looking to pick up any box sets of Combat Patrol or any other Warhammer, or would bear in mind the other places that you can get them a bit cheaper, I do have a bunch of discount retailers linked down in the video description. It can be a way to help support all specs tactics and keep these videos coming if you did choose to buy through them if you were getting something anyway. I probably wouldn't be rushing out to buy things just literally due to fear of missing out if it wasn't something you were planning to pick up anyway. I must admit I did choose to pick up a couple of Custodes box sets though. They were ones that I was planning to get at some point to go with that Watch of the Gate box set that I got a while back. It will be interesting to see if they come out with any other redesigned combat patrols or other discount deals around the launch of the Codex. I guess they might or might not be interesting depending on how much overlap there is. In any case, looking forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to post new 40k videos just about every day.
Finally, if you have been enjoying things on the channel, as well as those discount retailers links down in the video description, the channel's Patreon page is the most direct way to support the channel. If you'd like to help keep the videos coming in that way, that's also linked in the video description as well. Channel patrons do get to see a few videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.